I'm John Smith. That's all I want to be, John Smith, with his life and his job and his love. Why can't I be John Smith? Isn't he a good man? Yes, yes he is. Why can't I stay? Welcome to About Time, a Doctor Who podcast. I'm Stephen, and I've been a Doctor Who fan since 2005. And I'm Ben, and I've never seen the show before. Now we're watching and discussing every episode of the revived series, and quite frankly, it's It's about about time. time. Hello again. Hi. How have you been in the last five minutes? Uh, I'm very warm. Yes. Um, so now we're moving on to talk about the family of blood. The family of blood. It should be really the family of gases. Blood. Family. They have no blood. Yeah, but it's just symbolic. They have no blood. Oh, I don't know. Shush. They just look like a really cheap fart clip art. Okay. From a cartoon. Okay. And whenever they, whenever they um, talk to each other through telekinetic powers. They're like, they turn green. I was like, are you going to be sick? Mm. So the resolution of the cliffhanger, um, Martha somehow managing to grab one of their guns and hold Jenny hostage. Yes, because of the boy opens the thing and yeah, it yeah, screeches yeah. at them. Yeah, but Martha, Martha's good. Martha is good. She's learned a lot in the last few episodes. Yeah, she's, she's really good at getting them out of that situation there. Mm. But she wouldn't have shooted. Um, she she's she might doctor. have done. Hmm? She's a doctor. Yeah, but they're evil creatures trying to kill. But in a human shape, that must make it very... That would make it very hard. It would make it difficult, but I think... Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Martha could just shoot anything, even if it was no. an alien. Like, But also, she probably knew if she'd shot Baines, there were three others. Um, She was outnumbered. But they could risk it and he could... That's the point. She was playing on the fact that they weren't going to risk it. Yeah. But she probably wouldn't have actually shot, like you said. Yeah. Um, I love that scene where Baines has that standoff with the headmaster. Oh, yeah, yeah, outside yeah. Outside the school. And the headmaster, like, picks up that he's, like, not himself. He's like, you speak with someone else's voice, Baines. Who might that be? We, just, we don't actually know their names. We just know them as son of mine, mother of mine, daughter of mine, and fa- husband of mine, and father of mine. Yeah. Yeah, they refer how they refer to each other changes depending on who's and speaking. Wife of mine. Yeah, yeah. I suppose um, Baines and Lucy Cartwright would call each other brother and sister of mine. Mm. They do actually, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, she doesn't have very many lines. No, thankfully, because she can't deliver them properly. Oh, bless her! You can't be too harsh on children. No, I know, I'm not. Um, but like, some people were meant to be actors, mm-hmm. and some people just weren't. Yeah. So yes, we get um, more of the casual racism oh, yeah. um, from this time from Nurse Redfern. Yes, um, which is it's unpleasant because she's such a likable character, but like I said, it's it's um, she's a likable character, but accurate. tainted by the flaws of her time. Yeah, it's accurate to the time, you know. Um, like, but like the thing is though, Martha should have just said to her like, I don't. I come from the 21st century, love. Like, things are different. Like, there's a long way to go, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But yeah. Um, she can become a doctor and she will become a yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Unless Russell T. Davy kills her off. And if he kills her off, I will be quitting this pod. Okay. Just letting you know. A bit like how you said, if the doctor and Rose kiss, you'll quit this podcast. Yeah. You, they did kiss and you didn't quit. Yeah. We're going to the end of it. Yeah. Um, but that scene where she's like, she's like, oh, do you think... Bones of the hand, and then she goes through them all. Yeah. She, she's like, mic drop after that. Yeah. But then Redford goes... Um, you read that in a book? Yeah, she did read it in the book, but then she also used it to pass on an exam. Yeah. Like, normal maids would not just remember that. No, exactly. But it's just, it's all part of this thing of, that, like, this is a massive bombshell dropped on them, and none of them want to believe it because... It shakes their world. Yeah. You know, and also if she if she accepts that the doctor is real, yeah. it means she's saying she's losing John Smith, who she's falling in love with. Yeah. I kind of wish the doctor chose to be John. Really? Yeah. Well, we'd have no more Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I thought I thought like he was going to die and then the second heart that was in him would restart and he would regenerate. Oh. Because that lifespan has 
the human the human side has died and he could then open up the watch and then inhale the doctor and then be with her until she dies then go off back on his adventures like he's pretty much immortal so he can give a lifetime to her oh i see what you mean yeah like he gives he gives so little love and this person gave love and Mm. i don't know i just think i know i'm a soppy romantic at heart but i just think to myself like yet another person in your way Mm. has been destroyed by you 100 percent, yeah and like it's another like it's another thing and it's just like the most powerful line that redford says is like if you didn't choose if you didn't choose to come here would have anyone run died the answer is no they would not have died yeah and she they knows have, full well the answer to that yeah you can see it in her face lived their lives as they would have lived their lives but the doctor has a cloud over him it's almost yeah. like what he did at the time war has clouded him and yeah. cursed him the thing is i think he he forgets sometimes about the little people yeah and he sometimes to him it's all a game oh yeah maybe he has to see it as a game because otherwise it would overwhelm him but like that that scene at the end there that's an amazing scene with him and joan he's cut for it in that scene well he's 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 trying to be all like flirty and like tempt her like oh come on you know we could we could start again and all that yeah. and she's just like no I love John. Yeah. And, and you're you, not John. He's dead and you look like him. Yeah. yeah. John was brave and not brave to kill himself. Yeah. Basically, kill his essence, shall we say, to save the world. Like, I'm sorry, like, the Doctor doesn't... The Doctor is just... A... As much as he's likeable, he's so unlikable at the same time because mm. he is just not a very nice person. Well, yeah, he has massive flaws. Yeah. As we and also, do. like... He, this is, I'm sorry, Martha, but this is, you are just a rebound companion. Hence why you're only one season, love. But no, I just think to myself, like, the Doctor has this charisma. He has what no mortal man can give a woman. He has adventure and Mm. he's a bad boy, but yet a good boy. (laughs) Yeah. He's, in some ways, he's a perfect man. In other ways, he's deeply flawed. Yeah. Like, he is this enigma of mashups of archetypes of men mm. throughout history and he is that's why people women fall in love with him yeah but at the same time living a normal human life is that one adventure that he can never have he could have just had it no but not him not the doctor yeah. john smith could have yeah but... john at the very least he could have give is give and by the way why does he not to save this whole idea of falling in love he literally could have just said Martha's his wife. Yeah, but that's the whole point. It never occurred to him. Never, he never even thought that he might fall in love. Yeah. And that that's another brilliant moment there where John Smith is like, what, that never even occurred to him, falling in love, and that's what you want me to become. Like he, the, To him, the idea of the Doctor is so alien. Yeah. Literally. But he is, he, in this episode, you see how alien he is. Yes. And this is a massive side note, because I thought about this, I don't know, during the episode or... So you know that the Rose looks into the TARDIS and she almost... like. So if anybody knows who Phoenix is from X-Men, she beca- basically became Phoenix, um, tearing apart space and time, physical matter, blah, blah, blah. Um, as, she's, as it was pulled out of her, I like to think that a, pu- a part of her got pulled out and a part of the Doctor got pulled out as it went back into the TARDIS and somehow a part of Rose is in this TARDIS and he realises this later on and he can get to Rose. Like she's a home and beacon and he can um, slip through the, the, the wall into another universe, into her universe mm. because of the fact that this, her energy is yeah. in it. Yeah. But they've made that so clear that, um, I'm sorry, Stephen. They couldn't. I'm sorry. They can retcon huge chunks of Doctor Who and other media and other story types. Yeah, but don't you think it would weaken the whole no, ending? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Because we've felt that ending for many years. Well, I haven't. I felt it for like a couple of months. But, um, 
But like, honestly, I just think to myself, Rose is where the Doctor's happy ending lies. Mm. And I just think that when Doctor, when Doctor Who comes to an end, I just think this is where it should end. I don't think it will ever come to an end. We've discussed this before. Oh, it needs I to. I don't think it needs to. Don't you think it's getting a bit old now? Absolutely not. Shut up. Go away. <laughs> okay. It was nice knowing you, Pod. I will see you. Stephen will get a new boyfriend. No. Um, and he'll start this up when he gets a new boyfriend. Shut up. No, it never needs to come to an end. It may take another long, long break, but it will always continue. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like At the end of this one, yeah. at the end of this cycle, I think it should go back to somehow he gets to Rose and they go off into the sunset and he goes back and he sees his little self. Oh, his baby. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just think this, the thread running through this whole story of John Smith's reality disintegrating around him is so heartbreaking and so yes. well acted. Yes. Um, and that bit for, for Joan as well, like, you know, when she goes to him and she's like, tell me about Nottingham. And it's like, Part of her is testing him. Yeah. But part of her is also really desperately hoping. She's like, please, John, please tell me. Yeah. And he starts listing off all these geographical facts. Yeah. She's longing and for And she's it like, no, no, be... no. What about the little places where you played? Yeah. She's longing for everything that Martha said to be untrue. Yeah. And But deep down she knows. She knows it's true. She knows that the doctor created John Smith selfishly mm. to protect himself and in the end john smith had to make the biggest sacrifice mm. i just yeah i just think the acting on this two-parter is just unparalleled yeah really really good. um don't you love the bit where he just comes in and he's acting like a baboon in at the, the end ship, and he's like he just goes and he just like knocks into everything and then he suddenly gives him the thing and he said you should not let me touch all those buttons yeah <laughs> See, that's that's what I mean as well. And the thing is, on a rewatch, when you know, you know when he comes into the ship that he's already come back as the Doctor, yeah. but he's pretending to be John Smith. Yeah. You can see the subtleties and the layers of David Tennant's performance yeah. that he's actually different. He's actually the Doctor pretending to be John Smith quite convincingly, but it's not quite the same yeah. as when he's really John Smith. Yeah. He's ugh, so good. And then when he comes back... Like when he starts being himself again, he's like 10th Doctor on speed, like times 100. Cocky. Like really over the top, because that's what you need after he's been absent all that time. Yeah. And then sudden, and you know, and he slips his glasses on, he's like, I really don't like the look of that hydrochronometer. You know, it's like, yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to talking about their punishments. I was going to say, yeah, the punishments. How do they live forever? Yes. This is the one bit that I find a bit tricky. Like, how did he get her into the mirror? Yeah, that, that is a bit weird because these punishments... So the unbreakable chains, I can accept that for the father. Yeah. yeah. The tripping the mother into a collapsing galaxy, I can understand that. But the hiding the girl in a mirror and then turning Banes into a scarecrow that's yeah. frozen in time, I don't quite get how that's feasible. Yeah. Um, because they're very sort of symbolic... But, Lee, but the thing is, though, like, he must have locked them in the gases in them. Yes. Like, once they choose a host, I'm guessing that's it. They're locked in mm. until they can be... Yeah, all the doctors done something to them. Yeah. yeah. But, like, for me, I feel like two of them are a bit mystical. They are. They are. That's what I've, I've always found, that like, even though I absolutely adore this two-parter... I do find that a bit... That is probably the one, the biggest flaw is the the punishment. Like, I probably would have just had them die. Yeah, I do. I do like the idea of, like he said, we wanted to live forever. So the doctor made sure that we did, like in a way that is like, actually, immortality is a curse. Yeah. But um, perhaps there could have been a better way of doing it. Yeah. But yeah. I think Bane probably was the only one who could have... Because that scarecrow mm. is people are going to be like, Taking it down mm. when they build on it, build on that land. And yeah, they're gonna find a man behind there. But I don't know if it. I don't know how literal it is. That's the thing. Like, but the thing is, though, I don't think that. I don't think the people. I don't think he would live forever. I think his body would decay. Yeah. Um, I it would because human bodies decay. 
it would get old and decay. Like they need they need sustenance and food and energy to mm. to be able to. Yeah, he did say frozen in time somehow. So yeah, yeah I don't. I yeah, it's a bit confusing. Yeah, that's the probably the only bit that. I don't know, lets the story down a little the bit. The only criticism, really. But, um, yeah, but, like, other than that, yeah. And then you've got the little ending, the... Um, the, the memorial poppy cross. Yeah. It's quite nice to see the Doctor wearing a poppy. Yeah. And I think... I think... I, I think maybe he's thinking about his own... <laughs> well, exactly. ...people that... Because, um... When we when we do remembrance in this country, it's like yeah, it's about World War One and World War Two, but it's also about all conflicts yeah. and people who've you know lost their lives and stuff. Like yeah. beautiful, beautiful musical track in that final scene. Um, we heard it before at the end of Gridlock, um, but it's yeah, it's a version of the Doctor Forever that was never released on soundtrack, sadly. Um, but it's really lovely. Did you do it on Doctor Who thingy-majiggy? No, it was intended to be on our... If we ever did a next piece, we were going to do a Human Nature Suite. Um, but we never got around to it. We also didn't really talk about the scene where, um, in the cottage, where Martha is, you know, pulling out all the stops to get him to change his mind. Yeah. And she basically admits her love for him. Yeah. And then she says, I hope to God he won't remember any of this. Yeah. Do you think he does remember? Oh, 100% <laughs> he remembers. Yeah. Like, he's he is, he's absorbed all of... John Smith's, John Smith's memories. Memories. Of course he remembers. Yeah. But even still, he... I don't know. I don't know what I expect him to do about it, but may, maybe have a frank conversation with Martha and say, like... Look, you're. I just want to be your friend. Yeah. Not just kind of brush it under the carpet and let her keep... Yeah, just friend yeah. zone. I think he loves the attention. Maybe he, he does, The doctor yeah. loves women falling at his feet. Maybe the doctor just doesn't find human women attractive. What about Rose? Do you really think he found her attractive? Yes. Do you think they were boinking? Probably. If it was torture, we would have saw that. Blah. Well, let's not go there. And that bit as well, when, when he sees the TARDIS, mm. remember that? And he still, you could see in his face, but he he will he just refuses to acknowledge it. And that Joan turns to him and she says, "I'm sorry, John, but you wrote about it. He wrote about the blue box." Yeah. So it's just I literally all I can do is I have no words. I'll, all I can do is just tell you all the lines that just give me goosebumps and this make is, me cry. This is, that's what this. Oh yeah, Stephen was blubbing. Yeah, because I, it makes me emotional. It, it's a such. It's so good. I th no, to be fair, I think um, when things really hit you, because different things hit different people differently, mm. when something really hits you, it's probably because it resonates with you personally yeah. on some level, even if it's subconscious level, you don't understand. Yeah. And I, I might cut this, but I could be deeply personal here for a minute and say that I remember talking to a therapist once about this episode. Mm-hmm. And, and saying that it was my absolute favourite and it made yeah. me cry every time. Yeah. And we, we were talking about um, the themes of it and kind of why it resonated with me. And basically um, this idea of this mediocre man, John Smith, who is being shown and told that he's got this, all this potential, that he could be this amazing man, this doctor, mm. but he's too scared to take the leap and make that change. You know, your therapist is good, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and like, um, you should go back to her because, well, yeah, because something she said to me was, with every change, change it. The reason change is scary is because every change is a birth, but also a death. So you're welcoming in something new, but you're saying goodbye to what was there before. Yeah, and so change is scary. Yeah, and I think. I think we can all relate to that. Um, but yeah, that was, that is so you. <laughs> that is so you. Why? Like, this is a thing that people don't really see when they, they interact with you. Mm. They, they, they see this, they think maybe you come across rude because you're quiet. Mm. No, he's not quiet. He's shy. 
like he's just a shy person mm. with huge potential and like people shouldn't be judging Stephen before they get to know him because actually he's an absolutely incredibly talented person like fan orchestra brilliant his writing a lo- like he's he's written and produced his own work like it, and it was sold out like this my Stephen is an absolute amazing person he's kind he's considerate he's generous he's always there to be to back me up like honestly like i hit gold and like there are people out there that have said Stephen, while being with me like oh i wish i had given you a chance well tough luck bitch you <laughs> lost out and people have said that people have said to Stephen, like oh i shouldn't i should have given you a chance should have given you a chance but do you know what i gave Stephen a chance i'm glad you did seven years later we're still together yeah so ben. I just no, he is an incredibly talented person. Stop it! He shut out a book the other day. Stop it! Um, <laughs> like literally, like honestly, like I could go on and on and on about all his. He is just, I'm in awe of his abilities. Shush! Literally, my face is burning. Yeah. Um, but no, you. Are. I know. I know why you're doing this anyway. Why? To make up for um, when you offended no. me in our recording the other night, and we had an argument that I had no. to cut out. <laughs> no, no. The amount of times I've told you this. Yeah. Like. But you're amazing as well. Okay. And though you, I you think don't this, need to talk about no that. shush. I think the reason why we, because we have a lot of similarity, obviously, and that yeah. you you refuse to embrace your potential. Yeah. Um, which is it's exciting now that you're going to university. Yeah. And I think you're taking a step towards that. Yeah. But you you always um, deflecting and saying you're a piece of shit when you're not, you know. Yeah. We're both very um, self-deprecating people. Like, I was thinking about this the other day and I was thinking, like, why I was so tired. And, like, I think the reason why is because I am masking all day. Yes. And, like... Like I'm a quirky person, yeah. And like I'm, and when you're when you're working in retail, you have to drop this. You you have to drop this shy. This sadly, it will not get you anywhere. Yeah. Like, and if you want you've got more, to fake if, it till you make it. Yeah. But yeah. If you want more money in retail, you need to basically fake it till you make it. And like, I'm not very high up in the management ladder. I'm a team leader, so like. That's supervisor level. I've never had any desire, have I, to go up any higher than that? No. It's not what I what I plan to, but like literally, if you want to make it as a store manager, my manager told me, literally, like there are days where he doesn't know what he's doing, so you just gotta fake it till you make it. And he's incredibly shy as well. Mm. But you wouldn't get you wouldn't know that if you saw him. Mm. Because he said, like, you just have to you have to drop that if you want to be successful in retail or mm. any job. Mm. And that was the... Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, Marge's tits on the floor. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say to that. Anyway. But the thing is, though, like, honestly, like, I just want to put this in the thing, like, I believe, like, out of everybody bar my family, like, so bar my mum and my brother, you are the, probably the only other person that has ever seen me the real you like not real me i don't like that i don't like that sense like okay like when you when you're always trying when you're always watching um like you don't want to sound too rude you don't want to sound too yeah. nosy you don't want to sound too this you don't want to be this and you don't want to be that and you, you're always thinking you're like oh okay i'm clapping i'm tapping like i always tap mm. i always shut my legs Move my feet, move my legs. My that's yeah. my number one thing I do. You're stimming, and like you're always thinking. Okay, I always think to myself, "Oh no, keep your legs still, Ben. 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 Keep your... in my head." I'd like sit still, sit still, sit still. Mm. But I fidget because I get very restless. Yeah, and masking takes up a huge amount of energy. It does take up like, a huge amount of energy. It's no and wonder like, that we burn out. <laughs> yeah, and so I'm ready for change. I think. Yeah. Well, just think. By the time this episode goes out, you'll be. Well and truly yeah. underway. Um, yeah, I think we've I think we've covered most things to be honest. There's that nice um, moment where they're both holding the watch and they have that vision of their potential 
future together. Oh, yeah. I love that. I love that so much. With the children. Like, yeah. I just feel like John would have been a good husband. He would have provided. He would have... He would have been, he would have been lovely. He, yeah. he, he was a sweet man. He survived the war. Mm. Two wars. Mm. Um, and he, even at the end, he said, are you, my children okay? Or yeah. their children okay? Like... Just lovely. Yeah. I just thought, I thought, I thought like it was quite nice why they did it because I felt like it was like giving us like, giving us the rest of their storyline. Yeah. Without having the doctor to actually follow through. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, um, and we don't watch the next time trailers when we do this, but um, in the next time trailer for Family of Blood, they they put in all those clips of like, Oh, J- John and Joan with the children. Oh. So everyone was thinking, "Oh my God, you know, is it going to be like a big gap? Yeah, like, well, you know, how far is it going to yeah. go?" But yeah, it's just a flash forward. Did you like the old age makeup? Was that him? Yeah, I thought it was a different man. No, it's David Tennant. Uh-huh. Wasn't bad. No, it wasn't bad. Better than Scooby Doo down the road. Oh, what Lazarus? Yeah, yeah, Scooby Doo down the road. I don't know. Okay. The um the boy, Tim. Timothy. Tim, yeah. Yeah. He all this time he had the pocket watch mm. and every time he was opening it, he was literally revealing the doctor in some close vicinity. Mm. And it was a bit like can't you understand that like every time you open it, they come running to you. Yeah, although he did that deliberately, didn't he? At one point. Yeah, maybe. A couple of times. Uh it's funny that bit when when they decide that, oh, all they need is the watch. And then they've got the line of boys and they're like, this one? No. This one? No. This one? <laughs> no. <laughs> I find that really funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, no, I do think it was a very great episode. Yeah. I think it was a solid second part. Yeah. Did you think um, it was better or not as good as the first part? It was better. Better. Ever so slightly. So when we come to ranking it, it'll be number one. Yeah. I think just for me that it was, it had the action I liked. Yeah. Um, I think I'm the same as well. I think I'm going to put number one as well. Like, I think, I just think to myself, like, all about the Doctor is, yeah. And like, just the way Tennant is in that hut and he's like, if he realises this means that I'm going to have to die. Mm. And like, I liked, I, I, I just liked it. Yeah. I thought it was very good. I thought like it was, yeah, had a great cliffhanger, which meant that I did want to see what happens at the yes, end. Yes. Because the Doctor was so different, like, because he was so human, you're yeah. like, okay, how are they going to get out of this one? I know. That's what I love. I just, you know, when um, Baines lifts up the gun and he's like, change back. And the, and jo- uh, John Smith is just like, he literally doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. Yeah. It's not like the doctor's pretending. It's yeah. like literally this is a man and he actually doesn't have a clue. Yeah. And sometimes the doctor, when he feel, f- falls these um, these aliens, yeah. he basically goes, he basically like, some of them are so easy. Oh, you followed, you fell for some gastro nostril <laughs> thingy detector hidden thing. Olfactory misdirection, I think he said. Oh. And I was a bit like... A bit like ventriloquism of the nose. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so... And also, like, what shape were they in when they were getting chased first time? No idea. What host were they in? Any, they could have been any old people. Like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, these aliens are great ideas, but like, I needed to see more flesh. I needed to see more, (laughs) not in that type of way. I needed to see more like, what do they look like? How do they look like? Could we have a smidgen of backstory? Like, because like... We got that with Savine. We re- they're, they're another family group of aliens. That mm. are... are you ready to see the Slitheen again? Oh, I'm absolutely not. Do not. No. <laughs> they're not in Doctor Who again. God. But you did say the to BBC me... The BBC were like, let's burn their outfits. No, they haven't burned them. Because you did say to me, we we could casually watch Sarah Jane. Oh, dear Lord, they're in there. They are. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> they're more suited to Sarah Jane because... They work better for a childish... They're a bit comical. Yeah, exactly. With all the farting and... Yeah, exactly. So, anything else? Yeah. No? Yeah, no, I think, like, 
I didn't, yeah, the aliens were the weakest part, but they were also the strongest part, but yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's so much we could say, but um, we've been talking like... 40 minutes. Well, no, including the previous part as well, which like we've been talking all evening now Yeah. about this. Um, <laughs> um, just suffice to say, we absolutely both love it. Yeah, it was... Love is a strong word. <sighs> Come on. I really, 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 and really, really enjoyed it. No, yeah, I, I it. still, rem- I still remember the first time you actually, um, so the first episode you watched where you were actually really positive off the bat, which was Dalek. Um, all the that others, was episode five, season one. Yeah, it was. No, episode six. Oh, very close. Um, but all, all the ones up till then, you'd been very sort of uh, about, and then you, we got onto Dalek, and you went. Oh, it was a wonderful episode. I just to say, it was just wonderful. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah, no, I... When it comes to Doctor Who, like... Yeah. There are just episodes they do really well. Mm. And, like, this this is a, this is just proof for me that, like, obviously Phil Col, Col, Colin... Paul Cornell. Cornell. <laughs> Not Phil like, Collins. Um, He just... He just... He just... Some people just understand what they're doing, mm. what the Doctor needs, what... He probably had a great base story anyway, because yeah. he was... Which yeah. he, he wrote, did I, did I make that clear? He wrote the original novel. Oh, I see. Yeah, so he adapted his own novel. Oh, that's good. But then, of course, Russell has had his input as well. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, this is going to go number one, and then the other one's going to go number two. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm going to do exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad, because, as you know, it's my favourite story, and I just, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to get to it, and hoping you were going to like it. So yeah, I'm really no, glad it was you very did. good. Really glad you did. It was very, very good. You can tell that it was adapted by a book from a book because of the depth of the it. depth of it and the true understanding where the story was going. Yes, that's what Doctor Who can't do. That's what other writers can't do. They just they can't pace it properly. Whether that's coming from Russell T Davies' plan. Or what, like, just, like, these two parts just don't have the right structure in place. And, like, this has the right structure. I said it once and I'll say it again. Having the aliens come in about quarter way through as a part of the inciting incident or just after the reaction of the mm, inciting rather incident. Rather than being just a big reveal at the time. Of yeah, the like the climax. Yeah. Like, the yeah. climax of, yeah, and I'm just, like, the midpoint turn. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, this works so much better. Yeah. Because you understand, like, okay... So yeah, it just felt so good. Anywho. Anywho. We've got uh we've only got four episodes left of series three. Uh, so two singles and one double. Pretty much. Yeah. Um next week mm. is called Blink. <laughs> <laughs> Martha's gonna get turned to stone. Do you know what this means? Those bitches are back. What bitches? The stony bitches. Okay. You know about this through popular culture then, I guess. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I know um, that you said Moffat invents invents them. Yeah. So it's a Moffat episode next week. Yeah. Yeah. Haven't had him for a while, not since Girl in the Fireplace. No. Does he do an episode a week? An episode a season. An episode a season until he gets his show running big job. Yeah. So he's got this one next week. He's got a two-parter in series four. Yeah. Um, and then he takes over, basically. Cool. Anywho. Yeah. Look forward to that. Blinky boo. Um, until next time, you know where to find us. So there's nothing left to say. Except stay, stay fantastic. fantastic. Bye. Bye.